When is Ethereum 2.0 going to arrive? This is the topic of countless debate and speculation from lots of different people in the crypto space. So many people, you know, myself included, have been waiting for years for the long-awaited, fast, scalable, proof-of-stake blockchain that was the original version for Ethereum all along. And in this video, I want to talk about a major update that's happening to Ethereum today that's going to give us a clue into when this might arrive. And I'm also going to talk about what you should expect, like, hey, are you going to get free coins whenever the chain forks? Is this going to fix ETH gas issues? And do you need to do anything if you're a developer? So I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have a master blockchain step-by-step start finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this big update that might suggest when Ethereum 2.0 is going to arrive. So let's set the stage for this so that we can understand why this update's important and how it can give us some clues on where this is going to happen. So, you know, right now, Ethereum is on this multi-phase rollout where we're going to ETH 2.0 in the future, like later this year. I want to talk about specifically when I think that's going to happen. And we've been on this train for a very long time, many, many, many years. So right now, if you're using Ethereum today, you're using Ethereum 1.0. So if you've got your MetaMask connected, you're trading tokens, you know, sending ETH around, using a DEX, whatever, you're using Ethereum 1.0. And Ethereum 2.0 is set up on this separate blockchain called the Beacon Chain, which has Ether on it. It's being tested right now, but nobody can actually really make transactions on it. So the next big item in the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap is called the merge. Okay, that's when we take this Ethereum 2.0 blockchain that's over here, the beacon chain, and merge it back into Ethereum 1.0 that everybody knows and uses today. So the big change there is that Ethereum is going to become a proof of stake blockchain. So that means that basically right now Ethereum is run by miners. They mine crypto in order to validate transactions and include them into the blockchain. But whenever the merge happens, the miners are going to go away and we're going to have validators who stake their cryptocurrency to the network in order to validate those transactions. That's what it means to move from proof of work to proof of stake. And while this big update is not the final version of Ethereum 2.0, it's pretty close. And there's a lot of exciting updates and benefits from this like ETH becoming deflationary asset because more ETH is getting burned than is actually created by the blockchain itself. And you'll be able to actually take your Ether and natively stake it on the network to earn a passive income yield. So there's lots of reasons why people are super excited about the merge. But let's talk about this update that can give us clues when that's going to happen. So right now, like I was talking about, you know, Ethereum 1.0 is run by miners. And the whole idea is whenever we go to Ethereum 2.0, we don't really want the miners trying to maintain the chain anymore. That's the whole idea is whenever we go to Ethereum 2.0, we want everybody to switch over to this. And we don't want this old copy of like Ethereum 1.0, you know, sitting around. So Ethereum has this thing called the difficulty bomb in it, okay? And we have an announcement that the difficulty bomb has been pushed back to a specific date. So what is that? Well, basically, you can look at this chart here on Etherscan that shows the mining difficulty. So what is this? It's basically the difficulty that's actually programmed into the blockchain uh, that specifies how hard it is to essentially solve proof-of-work puzzles in order to include transactions in the blockchain and actually mine you know, the cryptocurrency itself. So we have this thing called the difficulty bomb that's going to make it exponentially harder uh, for miners to actually solve these puzzles in order to conclude the transactions into the blockchain. So essentially what the mining, what the difficulty bomb does, the bomb that goes off that makes it so hard to mine the chain that you effectively can't really do it. And the difficulty bomb has always been programmed into the blockchain to say like, hey, we don't want the chain to keep running before we, after we move to merge proof of stake, but it keeps getting pushed back. And here we have an announcement that it's been pushed back again. And we're going to give it a sp specific date about when that's going to go off. Uh, just get some clues on when we might merge. So here in the official announcement on blog.ethereum.org, we can see the Ethereum network will be undergoing a scheduled network upgrade at block 1505000, which is expected to occur on Wednesday, June 29th, 2022. So assuming that my publishing calendar doesn't get mixed up and that that's when it actually happens based on the block number, that should be today if you're watching this video. And so what does that mean for the actual timeline of the merge? And when does that give us some clues into when it might happen? Well, first of all, for everybody who is sitting here thinking that the merge was going to happen, you know, in the summer of 2022, uh, you know, like July, I think they're going to be disappointed. Like, I don't think we're going to see a merge happen in July. So why is that? Well, first of all, you know, actually implementing this difficulty bomb upgrade and uh, pushing it back to add some time to the timeline, at least that's my read on things, which will probably need more time to do the final work to actually implement the merge for it to go off. But it does give us a window as to when they think, you know, it's going to happen inside of. So definitely going to be after, you know, June 29th, probably not right after. And there's some other implementations that have to be upgraded, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But let's look at how far it gets pushed back to see what the tail end of that window is. So it's getting pushed back by 700,000 blocks, which is roughly 100 days. Okay, 
So again, we calculate time with blockchain by block numbers. We roughly know about how much time it takes to create a new block. And then you just add that time together to get an estimate of when uh, the future number of blocks is, you know, in, in the future. So it's 100 days from this date. So if you pop that into a calculator here, so 100 days from June 29, 2020 is October 7th, 2020. So the current bet right now is that the merge is going to happen before October 7th, just based on this uh, you know, simple math. So reasoning, you know, beyond that, I don't think it's going to happen on like October 5th. That's kind of cutting it close. If I had to guess, I would say a reasonable expectation would be maybe like a month before that happens, because we want to have some sort of tolerance so that you're not like trying to do the merge back and up right against a difficulty bomb because you don't, you know, something happened and you had to actually do work to push it back. You probably don't want to be cutting it that close. So, I mean, you know, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen, but I have had to guess, I'd say probably sometime like late August or early September, maybe even mid-September if it's kind of pushing it. And now there are definitely lots of caveats here. So first of all, this assumes that everything else goes successful with the merge testing before it happens. Because you have to understand, when you're doing the merge, what you're doing is you're taking two different blockchains, each of which have billions of dollars of cryptocurrency on them, and you're, you know, pushing them together, right? You're taking two things and making them one, in a live production environment. And so you know, there's a lot at stake here. And so you have to undergo lots of different tests, make sure that they all pass without any problems before you actually go do this thing for real. So what you do with Ethereum is you go do this on multiple test networks. And so we're currently in the middle of trying this out on different Ethereum test networks and assuming that those all go past with no issues, then we can go through the other final checks before the merge actually happens. Now, we want to be very careful. So if there are any problems, you know, that could delay this even further. So just because the difficulty bomb is set at this current date doesn't mean it's going to happen. If we have any issues, the difficulty bomb can be pushed back again and give us further delays. But for now, that looks like the current expectation based upon the team's adjustment data, this difficulty bomb with the Gray Glacier upgrade. All right, so let's go over some frequently asked questions that I get about the merge all the time. So number one is like, Whenever this happens, are you going to get free coins? We hear about Ethereum forking all the time or blockchains forking in the past where, you know, two chains are now there and you have free coins in each chain, you know, on each chain that can be traded. So um, my short answer is no. So here's why, at least I, I really highly doubt it. So we have to understand, we have this difficulty bomb in place that's, you know, designed to make the old chain not really usable anymore. And the other reason is that, you know, you have to understand that the thing that gives Ethereum value is actually all the, you know, cryptocurrency, the assets, the applications on top of it. Because theoretically, anybody could take the Ethereum blockchain right now and set up their own version of it. They could download the entire state of the blockchain and bootstrap their own Ethereum network. But it's not going to be the Ethereum network that everybody agrees upon. Because at the end of the day, you have things like stable coins on top of this blockchain, like USDC, Tether, and so if you were to bootstrap an entire copy of Ethereum that's separate from one that we know and use now, like nobody's going to honor the stable coins or the account balances that are on top of that blockchain. So by the same logic, like I don't see any reason why you're going to get free coins, whether it's, you know, Ether or some other, you know, cryptocurrency that's on top of the Ethereum network whenever the merge happens. All right. So the other question I get all the time on the Ethereum 2.0 merge is that you know, is this going to fix Ethereum's gas fees? Okay, so the short answer is no, it's actually not going to fix Ethereum's gas fees. The only real benefits that it's going to provide that most people are excited about are the fact that ETH is going to become a staking asset, it's going to be a proof of stake blockchain, and that, you know, Ethereum can become deflationary, assuming that the network activity stays at least constant. So that's okay, though, like, we don't have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to arrive or to fix ETH gas fees. The answer to that is layer two scaling solutions. So you can go to a website like l2b.com to see all the different layer two scaling solutions out there for Ethereum. Okay, you can see things like Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, ZK Sync, and a lot of others. So essentially, this is like creating a separate blockchain that you know, piggybacks on top of Ethereum where you can do a lot of different transactions and you can roll those up and then include those transactions uh, or this, the validity of those transactions back onto the chain. Different layer two scaling solutions work different ways, but the major food groups that I'm most excited about are the roll-up technology, which is what I just described with optimistic roll-ups and also ZK roll-ups. And specifically, I'm excited about the ones that are general purpose that work kind of like a separate blockchain that's just like a blank slate where any developer can write their applications and move them up to the layer twos to reduce those gas fees. And, you know, this has been the vision for Ethereum for a very long time is to use layer twos in order to scale. You can go read any of Vitalik's blog posts. You know, of course, Vitalik is the mastermind behind Ethereum in case you don't know who Vitalik Buterin is. And the community around Ethereum has also coalesced around layer twos as being the future of Ethereum scaling, fixing that gassy problem because, you know, that's the biggest complaint people have about Ethereum. It's too slow, it's too expensive to use and that's the answer. All right, so the last big question I get all the time is do you need to do anything if you're a developer because we got lots of developers watching this channel at the end of the day that's what I help you do in this channel is become a blockchain developer break into the blockchain industry so 
you know, most likely not. Okay, for the vast majority of people, like your smart contracts aren't going to break, your applications aren't going to break. Now, here's the caveat. If you are doing something that actually specifically deals with proof of work mining, then that could break. So if you're doing any kind of RPC calls that, you know, want to know what the difficulty of the chain is or anything that is directly related to mining, you might want to check those out. Okay. But for the vast majority of use cases, like you're probably not going to have to change anything whenever Ethereum 2.0 arrives. All right. So that's an overview of the Ethereum gray glacier upgrade announcement. So, you know, again, this is pushing back the Ethereum difficulty bomb to October 7th. So what does that mean for the Ethereum 2.0 merge? That means it's probably going to happen between now and October 7th. If I had to guess, I'd say within a month tolerance of that. So maybe sometime in early September, maybe mid-September. But that's all assuming that, you know, nothing else goes wrong. If something else goes wrong on a test network or something else in the implementation for the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap, then I would expect to see this get pushed back more. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you really want this thing to be right. You don't want to make any kind of compromises that could affect you know, the Ethereum chain, because ultimately, that's, of course, going to affect the confidence in the overall project and also the Ether asset itself, which, you know, nobody wants. So I hope you like this video. As always, you know, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast with the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. You know, like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, Maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I can show you how to master blockchain step by step, start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.